Hi folks, been a long time since my last video. A lot of things have happened. We've had a crazy year, all of us, I'm sure. Um, and for me, it's a bit of an end of an era. I've been in this workshop for the last, I don't know, 12, 13 years, something like that. And um, it's time to move on. I need a new location. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be the last video from this workshop. And because I never did it before, I thought I'd do a shop tour. I'll show you around show you all the machinery and um, and then it's time to relocate. Maybe I'll film a little bit of the moving all the heavy machinery and stuff and show you the new location. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So this is perhaps a, a good place to start. This is, um, this is kind of the center of the workshop really. This is where an awful lot of work gets done. This is my European style uh, panel saw. It's got a three meter long sliding table, which is not really the sort of thing you have at home. But uh, yeah, I was working commercially for many years before I started teaching. So this is the saw that we have. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a beast. It's very powerful. It's got a seven and a half horsepower motor. Um, originally, there was a shaper here, but I don't have that connected because it's a bit of a dangerous machine for students without an automatic feeder. So choose not to use it so yeah that's the that's the panel saw it's Italian it's about 40 years old and I really love it it's a great machine this is the back end of the table saw and this is the dust extractor for the table saw you see it's got a flexible hose coming from the blade into this big old blower which goes out here out through the window and into a sack and all the dust's caught out there. Very simple but effective. This is my jointer planer combination machine. It's a bit tricky to get a, a shot of it here. There's all stuff on this side of the machine. But uh, at the moment it's in thickness planer and I'll show you how it's set up as a jointer. As you see, it's got two motors, one for the cutter head, one for the feeder. It's a very old machine, about, I don't know, 65 years something like that and as far as i understand it was made here in israel um, i met an old chap whose factory originally made all these machines very interesting guy they used a lot of scrap metal from the military in those days and uh, apparently it's got a gearbox on it from an american tank from the starter engine which is what's used to slow down the gear for the feeder but uh yeah it's a bit uh Kind of nice, a bit like uh, plowshares out of swords, or something like that. So there we are. Here it is at the moment. It's all cast iron. It's an amazing machine. I love it. It's 40 centimeters wide. It's only got two knives in the cutter head. Um, but the feed rate's pretty slow, so you get a good finish. Uh, the jointer tables are really big. You can joint you know, three meter boards and get a good straight board out of them, no problem. So now I'm going to set it up into a jointer so you can see how that Okay, so I'm going to flip it now into jointer. This is like a thickness planer. This is the table that goes up and down for the thickness. This. this is a guard for the blade and a chute so I can connect the dust extractor which is just here to it. So I need to take this off and this is actually cast iron as well. As you can see, it's a big heavy piece. Then I generally drop the table out of the way. But I'm not going to do it all the way down now, but I drop it down big enough so that I can put the hood from the dust extractor here and it takes the dust away. I don't know if you can see from there, but here's the two feeders. This is the cutter head, there's two knives. So what we need to do now is close this table. Make sure these two areas are very clean. Just lock it tight. I 
there you go. So now it's a jointer. We've got two long tables, a nice fence for 90 degrees, which I can move and change the angle as well. This is the guard. Make sure you're not using it with uh, too much knife exposed. Uh, emergency stop. And there you go. So that's my jointer. I'll just show you this gearbox that I was talking about if you're interested. Well, there we are. There's the gearbox that's allegedly from a, a tank, from the starter motor of the tank. Apparently they need to be changed after 30 hours work in the field. And this old chap back in the day he told me he bought a truck full of them and used them for all sorts of gearing and all sorts of woodwork machine that he was making back then. So uh, I've got more machinery made by him. I'll show you them as we go around. So this is my dust extractor that's connected to the jointer. It's uh, also locally made as far as I know. Um, a big old engine on it, great big blower, a sack to filter out the dust, and a sack to catch all the large pieces. Uh, this was actually given to me by a friend of a friend, which is very nice. So, yeah, I like it very much. Very good. Okay, so as we work our way around, we work our way around from the saw to the jointer, here we've got all sorts of sanding machines. This is just a regular belt sander. We use it for all sorts of shaping and stuff. Definitely needs a new belt at the moment. Uh, this is a machine that was also given to me once that, um, that I, I use for sharpening my chisels and gouges and stuff. Well, for grinding more. Sharpening, I'm using water stones, but I use this for grinding. It's got a gear as well and turns slowly. Um, and here is a detail sander. I don't know if you can see that. It's got uh, what they call over here, they call it flapper, which has got like a cassette inside that you can load up with paper. Uh, here it's supposed to be this inflatable balloon, but it's got a puncture at the moment, so we're not using that. And over here, as we come around from the belt sanders, here's all my rounding planes. These are used for making um, round tenons in stick furniture, sometimes they use them on the lathe. We're getting close to the lathe now as well, with my electricity cupboard. And, uh, over here, this cupboard's full of all sorts of stuff for the lathe. Chucks and calibers and stuff. So that's the, all the chucks and calibers and all sorts of things I'm using on the lathe. Then continuing on in this direction, here's the lathe. It's also a very old machine. Um, I don't know if these castings are original or if they're copies. I'm not sure, but they're very old. The bed, you see it's made out of all sorts of different bits of scrap metal. And apparently the same guy that built the jointer built this, and he told me that the bed is the chassis also the, of an American army truck or something that he picked up in a junkyard 60 or 70 years ago. And uh, so this is the lathe. Um, yeah, it's very old school. I love it. At the moment, it's got Jacob's chuck in there. I was making some small parts for something. I don't remember what. Uh, this is the amazing belt tensioning device. The motor's just sitting on a pin, you see. And the weight of the motor tensions the belt. And there's more uh, pulley wheels underneath this guard that you can't see. But, uh, yeah, it's easy to change the belt like this. It's just on this hinge. And uh, there's all the gouges at the back. The sunlight's burning the picture out a bit. I'm sorry about that. Here's a whole selection of tool rests that I'm using. Some templates over there, all the tools you need. And yeah, that's it. So that's the lathe. Okay, so now moving around after the lathe is my bandsaw. Also a big old machine. It's one of my first heavy machines. I rescued this from a, a factory that was literally about to be bulldozed. This was down a few steps in the original building. This factory had grown around it. And uh, a friend called me and said, do you want a bandsaw? Come now, if you can get it out of that little room, it's yours. So I came with a couple of friends and we took it apart and dragged it up some steps and dragged it out of the workshop with a truck 
and with a crane, put it on another truck and took it away. I honestly at that time knew nothing about bandsaws and it was a pile of rust. So I took it all apart, ordered a book uh, before the internet, ordered a book about bandsaws and uh, yeah, took it all apart, put it all back together again and yeah, she's beautiful. I love this machine. Um, at the moment it's got a small blade on it. I can put much thicker blades. Uh, on here we can cut logs of 35 centimeters diameter, 34. Uh, so yeah, this is a great machine. You can wear little teeny blades as well for delicate work, big fat blades. Got a huge motor on it. And uh, yeah, so that's my bandsaw. I love it very much. I don't really know its history. Um, it's got all sorts of peculiarities. The two wheels are quite different to one another. But uh, yeah, it does the job. Wooden guide blocks. Uh, the, the thrust bearing is actually the valve of an automobile engine. But it's hard material, so it works really well. There you go. So that's my bandsaw. I thought I'd just give you a bit of a close-up look of what's going on here. That's the length of the blade when I need to order them. You see, this wheel is actually aluminium. Uh, the guards I added to make it a bit safer. Uh, wooden guide blocks. Like I said, there's no guide blocks underneath here. Just those wooden blocks. And this wheel, this one's cast iron. And I've changed the bearings on both these wheels and put new tires on both of these as well. Uh, this machine's with me for uh, more than 20 years. Some safety instructions for people using the saw is <laughs> the on and off switch which is also came from the arc I think and there's that big old motor I was telling you about I'll show you and that's also I put a guard on the on the belt down there because that was not not guarded originally and there's the motor there. It's got two big V-belts running the show from there. There's some spare belts so I know what size I need when I need to buy new ones. And uh, yeah, so that's the back of him. That's the bandsaw. So moving on around from the bandsaw, we've got the drill press. Um, it's an Italian machine. It's got a good few years on it as well. I've no idea what sort of age it is. Uh, I found this one at the side of the road, believe it or not. Someone had been clearing out their yard. Piles of junk on the road. Um, once or twice a year, people can clear out their yards here and the local council will send around a truck and clear up a lot of junk. So this was in a pile of junk. It's taken apart completely. Somebody had obviously started a renovation on it and then given up or something. But it was completely in pieces. And I just recognized it was a drill press with one of these parts poking out through the pile of junk. So I loaded it all into my uh, truck and took it back to my workshop and another one I took it all apart, put it all back together. There was a small problem uh, with the motor. Um, it's, got, it's got two windings, it's a three phase motor. And it's got two windings with two speeds and one of the windings was burned. But I worked with it for years and years just on one winding until eventually that one burned. And then I got the, the motor rewound, so now it's got two speeds from the motor, this is slow and fast. And then of course it's got a whole selection of gears so we can change the speed to nearly whatever we want. And um, yeah, beautiful machine. Part of the original table was missing, so I built it out of wood. But yeah, it does 90 degrees perfectly. And uh, yeah, that's my drill press with a beautiful original Jacobs chuck on it, made in Sheffield. So moving on from the drill press, this is uh, just an adjustable stand that's incredibly useful. Unfortunately, one of the rollers broke at some stage, but uh, incredibly useful, especially when you're working on your own, you might need a hand. So I'll just move that out of the way. And uh, here we've got a multi-co square hole mortiser, which is a pretty new addition here. I've hardly used it. Um, it belongs to a friend, actually. He's living abroad at the moment. Uh, I was trying to sell it. Anyone's interested to buy it, give me a ring. Um, so yeah, this is my square hole motor. So like I say, I've hardly used it. 
Uh, I'm very used to using the horizontal vorticing machine, which we'll get to in a minute. And um, this one also didn't have any knives. I ordered one off the internet just to see see how it works. Cutters, knives, drills, whatever you call this thing. But uh, yeah, an amazing machine actually. It's just I'm so used to using the horizontal mortising machine. I never, I never turn it on. But uh, an amazing piece of kit. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's for sale. There you go. And it's got a, a stand and a cupboard and a you know, to put all the tools underneath. So that's the, the Multico square hole mortiser. And uh, if we continue coming around here, we've got a cupboard here with all the drill bits and stuff in. So this is the square hole mortising machine. I'm bring you in a little bit closer now and show you how all of that works. So this is the square hole mortiser. As you see, it's got the chuck connected straight to the motor. It's a Jacobs chuck. It's got these kind of cutters. Um, so we've got backwards and forwards with the cutter, and here you've got a place you can adjust the depth. It's a great cast iron thing, everything. So this is the cutter head. And then you've got the table with left and right. And here you can adjust up and down like this. And you can see that moving. So you can set whatever size material you want up and down, depth of cut. And then the size of the mortise left and right is with these two threaded rods here, which you can just adjust for the size of the tenon that you want. And of course you can adjust the knife, the selection of knives, whatever size you want. And, uh, yeah, I just find it such a comfortable machine for every use here. We often do um, floating tenons makes life much easier than doing mortise and tenons. Um, it's also very old. This was, this came into my hands from, um, I was working for another carpenter doing some work for him uh, in my workshop doing his work. He got too much on and then unfortunately for him he went bankrupt and couldn't pay me so he kindly gave me this machine instead which is a really great result so I'm very happy with it. It's been with me for many many years and uh, yeah, going strong. Continue moving along in this direction. There's the mitre saw. Nothing special there, just a small Makita mitre saw permanently on that table. Uh, seems like yeah, it does a lot of work there. And as we continue around here, here's a router table. Nothing fancy, very basic. It's got a Ryobi uh, three horsepower plunge router mounted underneath. Most of the time we're just using it with a fence. It does have a sliding table that goes on it, but to be honest with you, I very rarely need to use it. And uh, the router stays there for doing all sorts of grooves and edge work and whatever you need. So it's very basic, it's just an old cupboard door with a hole in it, basically. So that's the router table. And uh, keep moving around, that's all wood storage behind, as you see. And keep moving all the way around here, more wood storage. And then we get to the safe. This is, a, this is a nice thing that I like a lot, so I'll tell you some stuff about the safe. So unfortunately, um, power tools do have a good market in the used second-hand area, so uh, they're popular with thieves. Now, as luck should have it, I never had a problem in this location, but in my previous workshop, I was burgled on more than one occasion, and... Uh, they even managed to cut this thing open one time. So since then I've put more locks on it and made it more secure. Um, it uh, also was made in Israel, this safe, I don't know how many years ago, a very long time ago. I actually found it after some somebody had stolen it from somewhere and dumped it next to a river. Uh, it was reported to the police. The police came, brushed it for fingerprints and everything and just left it there and no one came and picked it up and I used to go past on my bicycle every day and saw it sitting there so I said well if no one's going to take it I better take it so I came around with a, a truck and a crane because it weighs I don't know how much it weighs but it weighs a lot and uh, picked it up and uh, brought it back to the workshop and with a big heavy hammer straightened all the doors where they'd been pried open and welded onto it some new lugs to keep it locked 
and that's my safe and that's where all the electrical power tools are in there jigsaws screwdrivers uh, sanding machines routers all of that stuff I'll open the door and show you it's usually a bit of a mess in there but what the hell? Uh, you see this way I welded on some stronger locks originally it was these and these were popped open with a big crowbar once and all my tools were stolen uh, so there you go so that's the safe and the screwdrivers and sanders and discs and circular saw router all of that stuff in there yeah, it says uh, goldman uh, security written on it so, yeah. oh and the most important thing that i keep in there is the crowbar yeah, keep your crowbar in the safe. Otherwise, someone will use it as a key to get in your safe. There you go. So here we are. So now moving along from the safe, this is a view that's probably uh, familiar to you if you watch any of my videos. I often start off standing in front of this wall. Uh, this is all my hand tools. Well, not all the hand tools. This is my hand tool that are easily accessible. Underneath, it's just storage, sandpaper, glue, various junk, um, yeah, spare blades for the planer, all sorts of stuff, angle devices, whatever, all sorts of things, a bunch of mold grips. So uh, yeah, just storage under here. Here we've got the battery charging. Um, you can see what's going on here. This is all the clamps. Um, yeah, you can never have enough clamps, Bennett. Uh, so here's all the clamps, and as we come around, I've got a little office in there and a kitchen. Uh, maybe I'll show you. It's not it's not the cleanest, tidiest place on earth. And there's protective eyewear and earwear, a metal detector if we're using recycled wood uh, on the saw or on the plane. I want to check it's got no metal in it before we do that. And we keep coming around, and then there's more storage here. So that's the little office I was talking about. It's <laughs> yeah well this is where I edit my videos as well this is where we make coffee wash paint brushes whatever there's a fridge here there's I don't know it's a, a this is this is my little cave I like this place but there we are. so that's my little cave so um, working our way around the office was over there in that little corner we've got screws and a whole bunch of books and magazines and stuff all about woodworking here and we come around and there's the saw again. There's all the blades for the saw in a nice storage rack. Actually, one of my students made that, uh, which is really good because you can see the blades. You don't have to keep opening all these little boxes all the time. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's about it. You come around here, you see there's all templates on the wall behind the saw. That can just give you a little bit of an overview of some other things that we're using. Big huge fans mounted in the windows. There's two more over there. Uh, those are blowing out, and this one's sucking in, which actually keeps the air really clear in here. It's uh, we don't have a very cold climate in this country, so most of the year those fans run, and it keeps all the keeps the air clean. All the dust just goes out the window, basically. Um, yeah, here's piles of wood, which is a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a thing we have to move now. But that's after years and years being here. There's lots of boards here. Some of this is for sale. Some of it belongs to students. This is where we keep all the sheet material and offcuts over there. Uh, parts for students, projects go over there. More storage up here, just miscellaneous stuff. And uh, so that's the workflow, really. I mean, you come in through the door. You cut stuff on the table saw, might cut it to length, you're going to joint it and plane it. Uh, sanding machines, there's the lathe, the band saw, the drill press, the mortising machines and the router and wood storage. And that's the way it goes, like that. And in the middle of all of this, because we've been going around the wall, so in the middle, oh look, there, there's, the, there's the tripod. But in the middle, we've got some work tables, and this is where students can work. And here's some baskets ready to start packing everything up. And so there you go. What else can I show you? Oh, there's very good lighting. That was one of the first things I did when I moved to this workshop. 
I'll have to do in the next workshop. I need good lighting. Um, and this is outside. What do you want to see outside? What have we got out here? So this is like a, a domed plastic roof I've got on here. And there's lighting here as well because you need good lighting. A couple more tables. People can work outside. Usually sanding, grinding, noisy, messy stuff. Recycled wood, taking out nails. Uh, over there underneath this plastic there's more wood, of course. Uh, lots of wood and more wood and more wood and more wood and a couple of surfboards over there uh, Here's all the shaving horses when we're doing the rustic furniture. Everyone's using a shaving horse. There's another one There's a big old machine over there in the corner that I never plugged in. It's a big um, belt sander with a sliding table uh, This is the machine I use to peel the saplings for doing all the rustic work with and just more storage the compressors over there underneath that little roof and more wood. There's some students work they need to take away actually. There's the sign, that's in Hebrew. It says um, um, Rustic Furniture Workshop, basically. And this is outside. There's a few more boards and stuff over there. And uh, nice little fence outside. It's green at the moment here because it's springtime. And there you go. So that's it, end of an era. All right, so there you go, guys, there you have it. That's a tour of the workshop. Um, I hope it gave you a bit of an idea of what's been going on here all these years. Uh, like I say, it's time to move on. I'm moving to a new location and I'm gonna take you along with me and hopefully make some new videos there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know in your comments below and I'll uh, see you in the next one. All the best for now, bye.